And welcome back. He was in charge of the White House Communications Department for a brief period in the summer of 2017. What a wild ride it was. Anthony Scaramucci saw the White House behind the scenes, working with President Donald Trump until it all fell apart. He is a man of many trades, a financier, entrepreneur, author, political consultant. Today, he's a guest on our show. Joining us from Toronto, Mr. Scaramucci, thanks for taking the time and welcome to Canada. Hey, it's great great to be up here. I, I got my career started up here uh, selling shopping malls for uh, Cadillac Fairview. So it's a, it's a fun place to be. I love your country. What was it like to actually work in that White House? Well, I mean, let's just remind all of your uh, viewers. I, you know, I got fired after 11 days, so it was a little bit of a bl blur. Uh, but I will, I will tell you this, you know, I, I grew up in a blue collar family, and so I've lived a good part of the American dream. And so in many ways, it was somewhat emotional. I mean, it's a, it's a, to have the opportunity to serve the country when you come from a background like mine, I got to tell you that I, I, I was uh, sucked into it, if you will. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a majesty to that office. There's a majesty to that building. And, uh, and you know, listen, uh, unfortunately, things are not going well now because we've got somebody that is not doing the right things in the job and is obviously not acting in an appropriate way. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I look back on it still fondly. Despite whatever my mm. personal trials and tribulations are, whatever mistakes I made, I look back on it fondly. Is the president the same behind the scenes as he is in front of the cameras? Well, I mean, listen, I haven't seen him in a long time. You know, it's, it's been probably a year since I've seen him face to face. But uh, uh, the thing I can tell you, and people are critical of me, they're saying, well, He's, he's acting the exact same way that he did in 2016 or 17. Why are you breaking him from him now? There's absolutely no difference. And so um, I can accept that criticism, but I actually think it has gotten worse. And I think there's objective standards to look at, whether it's his personal mannerisms, his communication style, some of the things he's now doing on Twitter, uh, equating President Xi, for example, to Jerome Powell and saying, who is the bigger enemy of the United States? I mean, this is stuff that is, I think, way outside of the even normalcy for President Trump. And so for me, uh, enough was enough. Uh, the red line for me was really with the Congresswomen uh, using those racial, racist tropes in a Twitter feed uh, is nonsensical from the leader of the free world and somebody that uh, is running a country whose first name is United. And so they told my grandparents that 100 years ago. And I spoke out against that. He didn't like that. And since he's a demagogue, you can't be in seventh tenth support for him or eight tenth support. You've got to be like some of these Fox News announcers. You've got to be in eleven tenth support for Trump. And so I can't do that. I can't disavow my personal history or my integrity or things about my life to try to uh, give somebody a level of loyalty that they don't deserve. And so uh, I spoke out about it. And I think the situation has gotten worse. I said that Jonathan Swan from Axios a few weeks back, that he's in full-blown meltdown. It's like the episodes of Chernobyl, uh, <laughs> where the reactor's melting down, and now people are trying to figure out whether they're going to cover it up or they're going to clean it up. And so uh, as a good-standing Republican, I'm calling on Republican elected officials, we have to clean this up. We have to clean it up on behalf of our children, on behalf of our country. And let's face it, on behalf of the world. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that happens. Just quickly before we go, what do you think his re-election chances are? Well, they're diminishing every day, thankfully. But uh, there's still a chance there because he's the incumbent president. He has very ardent supporters. Uh, the economy is still strong. Uh, but I predict he won't make it to that election. I predict that there's such the severe mental decline going on uh, that the, the most likely outcome here, and I think the proudest outcome, would be to say, OK, I, I did a great job, and I'm, I'm going to retire at the end of the term. And so that's what I'm hoping for, uh, and that's why I'm rallying a cause of uh, normal Republicans, patriotic Republicans, to step forward here uh, to see if we can put up a very formidable, normal, uh, healthy competitor uh, to what's going on on the Democratic side. Enjoy your time but, in Canada. But notwithstanding, everything I just, not, notwithstanding everything I just said, if he becomes the nominee, you know, you're at risk that he gets reelected. That'll be really bad for us. Listen, thank you for taking a bit of time to stop by on the show. Enjoy your time in our country nice and all the best. Safe travels. Thank you.